The last thing we had done in the previous episode is to um, program our person so that it can run in a circle using the turn and move methods. So here it runs now in a circle. So what I want to do now is I want to program my people um, so that they run around randomly, um, not just um, in circles. But as the first um, step that I will do is I will make them run um, straight ahead until they hit the edge of the world and then I make them turn around. So I, what I can do is if I take that away, if I make them move with some arbitrary speed, three is fine. Um, and then I want to make them turn only if they hit the edge of the world. So I see, I say if is, and then hitting control space um, on my keyboard gives me the code completion so I can see all the methods that start with the word is. Um, and then I hit return when I have the right one. So there is the if is at edge. So I check whether I'm at the edge of the world. And if I am, then I turn, say, um, I want I want something fairly irregular. I don't want to, if I turn 180 degrees, they will bounce exactly back and forth. So I make it something 87 degrees so that, that I'm just cho choosing a relatively arbitrary um, odd number so that they go off in odd directions. So um, if I do this, I make them move and if they are at the edge, um, I make them turn. I can try that out. Um, remember shift click in the world puts this actor in. Um, so if I do this, um, it will now um, bounce around here at some what odd looking angles. Um, that is fine for now. Um, but what I want to do is I want a number of different um, I know at first the first thing I'll do is I want a lot of people in my world. I, I don't want just one person and I don't want to go now and you know right click it and and or shift click it and you know interactively create sort of a hundred people. So I want to program my scenario so that it starts off with say two or three hundred people um, to start with. I do that in the world. So I go, I double click the world class, then I get the um, the editor for the world class and see that the world class also, just like the actors, is just a standard Java class. Um, and here is a super call. Um, so I'm calling this super class constructor. That's a constructor of the world with three parameters. And these parameters here are the size and the resolution of the world. I currently have a 600 by 400 cell world where each cell is one pixel um, high and wide. Um, there's a comment that tells me that. I can delete that comment because I actually know that. Um, so the first thing I do is I make my world a bit bigger. Let's say we make it 1000 by 600 or so. Let's see what that looks like. If I go back, I can see, well, this is actually just slightly too large to fit on my recorded screen. Oh no, I can just about make it fit. So let's just leave it like that so that I can record my whole window. Um, and now I go back um, and I have adjusted the size. Then I want to um, create the, um, let's say, how many do we want? How many people? Let's say 300 people or so. Um, I can easily do that by having a for loop and in the for loop create um, the people. So I can say for int i equals zero um, i while i is less than 300, um, i plus plus, and then I say add object, um, that's a method of the world class, and then here I just create a person um, calling its normal constructor, and if I do this, I create 300 people. Let's try that out. Um, I go here, oh, this indicates an error, um, oh, here is the error message. Of course, it tells me here that add object in class Greenfoot World cannot be applied to the given types. It said it required an actor and an int and an int, and I, I supplied only a person. Supplying a person for an actor is perfectly fine because of subclassing. The person is a subclass of actor, that's fine, but it wants two integer um, 
parameters. And we can see that if we look at the documentation of that person, it actually wants um, the coordinates where in the world to add this. So here um, I have, uh, it wants an x and a y coordinate, and I'm just writing x and y, I don't have an x and y, so I have here I want to have an x coordinate and I want to have a y coordinate. And what I actually want is I want to make them random. So I can say greenfoot dot get random number and I get a random number with the greenfoot get random number method. I get a random number between zero and the limit that I specify here. Zero is the left uh, edge of the world that fits well, so it's the lower bound for my x coordinate is right. And I can just say get width because I am here um, in the world class. The world class has a get width method that gives me the width of the world uh, in number of cells. So this gives me a random number between the left edge of the world and the right edge of the world. And I can just copy this and paste it here and do the same here with the height, get a random number between zero and the height of the world and use that as the x and y coordinates. Let's see what I can, yep, now it compiles. So we go here and we see immediately we have now, um, how many, what did I say? 300, um, 300 people in the world. And if I run this, all the 300 people are running back and forth. At the moment, it looks very regular because of course they are all starting off running in exactly the same direction. So they're all running in a whole big group. Um, but I have already um, 300 people running around. Okay, that was a good next step. Um, what The one thing you should do, if you want to explore yourself a bit more, look at the methods in the world class and see what methods you have available here. You can do that by double-clicking here, the world superclass, and you get again uh, the documentation view and you see all the methods that the world has available. And of course, by inheritance in your own world class, you inherit the methods from the world class. So you can use all these methods that you have available. And there you see the get width method that I used, the get height method that I used, and the add object method that I just used to put my, um, my person into the world.